Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today for another Sunday Sew Along we are doing another pattern hack. I am using the book Ahead of the Curve by Cashmereette. We are going through um, the whole month of September through four of the five patterns that are in that book. You don't have to use these patterns. Any of these hacks will work for any pattern of a similar type. Today we're gonna to be tackling the Honeyborn dress, which is a woven uh, dress. It's got a fitted bodice, it's fit and flare um, with a gathered skirt on it, a zipper up the back, and um, kind of a elbow length sleeve. So um, for this one, you could use any pattern that's similar. Doesn't have to have the same features. We are tackling necklines today. So really any fitted woven bodice would work on a top two, um, can work for these specific um, hacks. So I'm going to be showing you how to raise and lower a neckline, how to uh, draft a v-neckline, how to draft a square neckline, and then how to do um, a facing. So this pattern actually includes uh, bias for finishing off the neckline, and um, when you're doing a shaped neckline like a v-neck or a square neckline, it's much easier in my opinion to do um, lining, which I'm going to be doing fully lining my dress, which is what I've done here, or um, using a facing. So I'm going to show you how to draft those facings and then um, then you can sew those in per normal, per like a regular facing. <laughs> All right, the fabric I'm using on this is a cotton shirting. I actually got this from Destashify, so unfortunately it's no longer available. I think it's beautiful though. It's like a brick red with this cream polka dot. I think it's gonna be so good for the holidays um, as we get into, I mean, we're only in September right now, but you know, November, December are gonna be here before we know it, and my birthday's the day after Valentine's Day, so it would be a great birthday dress as well. Um, I have made the size 12, because this book only comes from size 12 to um, 32, and um, I'm like a 10 normally, so I've just kind of gone up. I'm a 10 that grades to a 12 at the waist with most cashmere patterns, so I've just done a straight size 12 with the GH cup on this one. I shortened the bodice by an inch, and then I shortened the skirt by two inches. So um, that's just because I'm short. <laughs> I have a short bodice, so I always shorten the bodice. And then, um, yeah, I am I have longer legs, but I'm still only 5'2", so I always have to shorten the skirts as well. All right, guys. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them down below, and I will answer those as soon as possible. Hope you've enjoyed this one, and if you would like to, I do have a coffee account that's linked down below that's like a virtual tip jar. All that money just goes right back into the channel, helps maintenance on the equipment, um, new equipment, editing softwares, all that kind of jazz, um, supplies, all that. <laughs> Goes right back into all that, which is primarily used for these educational type of videos. All right, that's all I have for today. I will um, answer your questions when they come through, and I will see you guys again on Tuesday. Have a good one. Bye. Hello, everyone. Today, we are conquering the Honeyburn dress from uh, the Cashmere Head of the Curve book. Um, I have found the uh, digital files that you can print out. Uh, so I've done that. I had actually sent them to the copy shop because it was kind of a lot to print out at home. Um, so I sent them off to the to the copy shop and they've arrived and now we're gonna, we've got them here. So for um, today's tutorial, we're gonna be talking about necklines. So this pattern has a um, center back skirt, well, a back skirt, I guess, a front skirt and then these side panels I guess um, yeah the side skirt so obviously we're not messing with the skirt at all that's null and void and this is a I think this is a gathered waist um I've not made it yet let's see it also comes with the oh a neck facing I guess this gets finished off like bias does okay so it's got like a bias the bias tape to finish off the neck edge which I'm going to show you um, if you don't want to do that how we can get around that and then the sleeve and then obviously the front and the back okay so basically we're going to be working with the front and that's kind of all but um, I do want to talk a little bit about for these the two necklines that I'm going to show you so the neckline that comes with the dress is a scoop neck and it's I mean, it's pretty high. Um, I would call it, a, it's not a crew, but I would call it a higher scooped neckline. Um, Jenny's got it on on the front of the book and she's not showing any hint of cleavage at all. Like it's pretty high. So, um, and it has you just finishing off the neck edge and the zipper edge and stuff with uh, the bias tape, which I do love that neck finish. And if I were doing this neckline, I probably would use that. But alternatively, um, we can draft facings and I'll show you how to do that. 
or you can just line the bodice of the dress. So that would consist of um, cutting out the front and the back in lining as well as in fashion fabric and then finishing off the neck edge, you know, with a lining or with a facing. They, they're kind of the same thing. It's just the lining obviously gets tacked down, folded under and tacked down at the waist, whereas a facing, um, my preference is to top stitch around the whole outside edge. So I'm going to actually line my dress. So the dress that you're seeing has been lined because I want to wear it this um, in the cooler months. And so I just like that finish. So I'm going to be lining the bodice of my dress, um, but you know, I'll show you how to do facings as well. All right, so let's get started. So for right now, we don't need the back. We only need that when it's time to draft facings. So I'm gonna set that aside for right now. So I'm gonna show you how to do a square neckline or a V neckline. And I'm also gonna show you how to raise a neckline it or lower it should you so desire. So first things first, let me pull out my paper just so you can easily see what I'm doing. So I'm not going to be messing with the back neckline on this pattern at all. I like the I like the height of it. You know, it's got a nice, real pretty. It's a high. I mean, it's a high back, but it's not super high back. Um, so I'm going to leave that as is. All right. <clears throat> so we've got our front here, and hopefully you can see that. Okay. I'm going to use some pattern weights just to keep things weighted down. So let's talk about raising or lowering a neckline. So if we were going to keep the neckline as is, um, how you would raise or lower it. If you wanted to raise, where's my ruler? Gotta have all your tools. <laughs> if you wanted to raise, and this could be on any neckline, an inch, what you're going to do is um, you're, just, you're literally just going to draw your center front line and you're going to raise that line up an inch like that. Now, if you're doing this, you want a French curve or a hip curve like this. I got mine at Joann's, but you can kind of get it anywhere. And if I look here, you can kind of see the curve that's there um, of the current one. And I'm just going to pivot that out. So I'm, I'm not changing my, I'm smashing my paper there. I'm not changing my, um, shoulder at all. But what you do want to do is you do want to come off of this a right angle for like at least a half of an inch. That way you don't get any weird, you know, because it's being cut on the fold. You don't want it ducking. You want it to be flat for just a little bit. There we go. And that's going to work perfectly. And then you would just draw in your new neckline. Now you would need to remeasure this because um, that would determine how much tape you know, bias tape you needed. If you had a facing, you would need to redraw the facing in. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Um, so that's how you do that. Conversely, if you want to lower a neckline, same thing. We're just going to go down an inch and then do the same drawing in of that neck edge. Okay. And you would have to remeasure it to, um, to make sure that, uh, your length of the neckline is the same. And if you, again, if you have a facing, you would just need to draft another facing. And again, I'll show you that in a minute. <laughs> Same thing if you've got a V neckline, but let's go ahead and let's draft a V. I'm going to take it down um, and we'll do the V in this burgundy ink. I, I do want to take this down an inch because it's, um, I want it down just a little bit more. I think a V is just a little nicer down a little bit longer. So I've made my one inch mark right here on my pattern. Now for this one, I don't want to, you know, to oh my gosh, to flatten that out a half inch because this is a V neckline. However, it's very tempting to just go, you know, do a straight line, a straight V, but that's not very attractive. I prefer a nice curved line down to my V neck. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go down two inches to get a good V. And this should still be fine. I'm not worried about this being too revealing. But it is going to come up just a little bit more on the outsides because a V-neck line usually isn't as open as a scoop neck line. So just a nice soft curve. 
I should have been that in a different color ink, shouldn't I? <laughs> From the shoulder point down to this point. Okay. So you're adding a little bit here because a scoop just is a little bit wider neckline, but we're adding a little bit here um, to this point. And then again, if you've got a V-neck, you can still do the same thing. You can raise and lower the same way I just showed you. You just want to follow a similar shaped line. It can change a little bit um, to make things work. But yeah, doing a nice curved neckline down to the center point is really beautiful. And this is actually the one I am going to, I've not taped anything down here. I should have. Um, this is actually the neckline I'm going to be using for this example because this is going to be a um, um, dress that I'm wearing in the cooler months, and I would rather have a, I don't know why square necklines feel more summery to me, but they do. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I don't know why. Okay, so that is how we do a V neckline. Again, I'll show you how to do facings here in just a minute. Now, the way we would do a square neckline. Now, this is my preference. I really like when um, when the point of the of the of the oh my gosh, the point of the um, square neckline is out just a little further than the shoulder point, so it kind of comes back in towards your neck. I just think that that's really pretty. Not a lot, but a little bit. So I'm I'm not going straight down. Where is even my I'm not even sure what my grain line looks like there. It would be there. So if you look straight-ish. Okay, so this line here would kind of be straight with the grain line down. I want it to go out just a little bit. I just think that that's very flattering. Actually, I'm going to do this one with a pencil, and then I'll go back in with my pen. So I'm just going to make a line. And then I'm gonna keep, um, we'll make the square neckline equal with the, make it a little bit lower. So we'll make it equal with the, um, oh, do I wanna do that? Yeah, we'll just make it equal with our V-neck here. Okay, um, so I am going perpendicular to my fold line and I'm making a line out. And that line is, for those of you that like math, four and three quarters out. So four and three quarters from center front to this point. And then I take a line perpendicular from that one and I'm going up to my um, shoulder point, matching that spot up to my shoulder point. Like so. There we go. Okay, so now this blue, again, same shoulder point, this blue, I would just cut along there for my neckline to get a square neckline. Um, and again, I would finish both the V or the square off with either a facing or li fully lining it. Now, let's talk about facings. Let me see if I have another color pen. <laughs> I do. Okay, so facings. We will do, um, well, I'll just do the facing off the square neckline. It works the same for the V-neckline. I like my facings to be a finished one and a half inches. So, um, but we got to account for seam allowance. So that means I'm going two inch, and there's a half of an inch seam allowance on this. So I am literally just making a line two inches. And two inches. So when I trace this off, this will also get cut on the fold and I will trace down this blue over and then the pink and up, trace in your, your uh, shoulder point, uh, your shoulder line there, and then also your center front. And that's going to be your facing. Okay. And then for the back, same thing. We're going to do two inches. 
Again, I'm going to be lining mine, my bodice fully. And because my fabric's cotton, I think I'm just going to go with a cotton for my lining. Just like that. So now I'll trace the neck edge down along this pink line and the shoulder edge. And that will be my back facing. And I would interface both of those pieces. And then they would get sewn in. And then I like to have mine top stitched in when I'm using a facing. Okay. And it'd be the same for the um, V-neck. I would just do a two inch uh, line that's parallel that goes all the way to that point as well. Okay, I hope that that is helpful. As always, let me know if you have any questions down below and I will answer those as soon as possible. This is just a really easy way to change up some of your patterns and get a really different look. And it's, it's very simple. <laughs> There's not a lot of extra steps to it. And then you can have a few different ones drawn on your bodice piece and it's easy just to make a decision whenever you're pulling your pattern out to sew. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. Again, any questions down below and I will see you guys again next time. Bye.